We are the Catalan Independentist Resistance, and you are listening to a new update from Radio Hadrian in Free Catalonia. A nation can survive idiots, even over ambitious people, but they cannot survive treason from within. Cicero. Good afternoon. Today is 10th of February 2019. This is David Rabandos. This is chapter 85 of Radio Adrian. This uh, madness that was born thanks to Delia Forrest and Cheryl Scott. But not precisely in the English version, but in the Catalan version, it's changing history in Catalonia. We're doing conferences every Thursday between 50 and 70 people in each place and a thousand people or two thousand or more come to us and people we don't know are listening in the thousands. This radio that is um, saying the contrary of what every other media tells in Catalonia and most of them in Scotland as well. So thanks again, thanks, thanks, thanks for being so important in changing history in Catalonia and hopefully in Scotland as well. This program is dedicated to Pep Farré, our companion in the Catalan resistance that I've known only for nine months. He spreads our message, he gives us ideas, he puts links that are interesting to keep our minds open. And he comes to every conference we do, even when it's two, three hours far away from where he lives on work days to help us with technology, to help us with passing things to our to our hero, Xavier Segovia, from the technical place. Um, it's amazing forming part of this thing. It's amazing because we're going to declare Catalan independence. But it's also amazing meeting such an incredible team of people. I've been in four different political parties. None of them came close to the quality, the human quality of the tremendous natural leaders gathering around. That's the in the Bandista Catalana. We're commenting today with Delia over the phone. If this was a project, we would handpick people and we would be lucky enough to have a fraction of the human quality and capabilities that the core group of the Catalan resistance offers. If this didn't require millions of people resetting everything they've learned since they're born, which is a challenge, I need to, I accept that. We already have won. If this was a company, we would have already defeated our competence, our concurrence. But it is not. So um, we need to make people act very different. They need to be more courageous sometimes more experienced or more intelligent than they've acted in their whole lives, and that's where the challenge lies. Um, as always, you can collaborate financially with this project. You can collaborate spreading these programs. We can meet you if you come to Barcelona. Let us know. And we keep advancing in the project to launch crowdfunding. Uh to finance the documentary, The Lie, the documentary about the truth, that tells the truth about the Scottish referendum rigging and, and the Scottish process in general, and also in Catalonia. Today, I'm going to talk about several things about the Catalan process, briefly also about Scotland, and some strokes about Venezuela. Well, here it was... Privilege, we've been in Girona this Thursday, making a conference for 40-something people, almost 50. As I said, a lot of people, listeners of this program, and people find it hard to accept, but they are coming to terms with the fact that we, we've been betrayed by our own side. And we have almost one conference every every week, every Thursday. And we're also doing live shows, uh, live question and answer on Mondays. I have a um, live question and answer plus speech every two Wednesdays. And we do this program in three editions every weekend. So um, we're growing. We are several thousand people strong. 
We've multiplied by a thousand in a year. We need to factor that again. And we're going to be millions enough to bring down the Spanish system. This week in the Catalan process, the thing has been, well, last week, there's been a lot of talk. The, the ones listening to us already know that the prisoners are actually double agents that murdered independence more than a year ago by non-declaring independence when they had a double chance to do so. But Spain needs to make heroes of them. The moment people will realize that we've been betrayed by these people that are supposed to be in exile or prisoners, their lives will be in danger. We're going to try to protect them, but I, I don't know how we can guarantee millions of enraged people that have been fooled for years. They've been putting money. They've been putting time. They've been putting effort. It's going to be very difficult to protect these traitors. So all these things... There's been videos appearing how these were mistreated. All oh, this is a farce. The basic thing is, are these people helped Catalonia or Spain? The answer is they helped Spain by non-declaring independence and by ignoring the referendum of 2017. Thus, they work for Spain. Secondly, did Spain have to search for them in the mountains or in some uh, hidden uh, hole? No. They presented themselves to the tribunals of a country that is supposed to be not your country. And they went on their own free will. And third, these people have been in Catalan prison for several months. So it was as easy as opening the doors. But of course not. Because they need to be made victims because these people are the traitors that made independence impossible. The other joke of the week, because every week we need to be distracted by non-relevant things, is uh, there was supposed to be a relator to take notes of what the Catalan side says and the Spanish side says. Well, this is supposed to be so unacceptable that Vox, Ciudadanos, PP, the ultra-right Spanish parties, have organized a march in Madrid tomorrow, a march where everybody is invited, buses are paid for. Everybody who wants to go has a bus paid to go. Okay? Only the idea of putting not even a mediator, but a relative. So, things are a bit out of hand here. As this advances, the, the court, the case against this so-called political, so-called independentist, starts next Tuesday. And as we know that it's all of ours, we know that they work for Spain. Every government in the world knows that the prisoners work for Spain. Every main newspaper knows. The judges know. The lawyers on both sides know. Everybody who's somebody knows. And several thousand Catalans who are in the Catalan resistance know. But the whole thing is to keep millions of Spaniards and millions of Catalans in the dark. Because they need to keep thinking that these people fight for Catalan independence. Well, they are the people that have made bigger inroads to murder independence. So we have some curiosities. This curiosity is, well, we, we, we know it's uh, so popular, but we have professional curiosity to see how they're going to do the trick. Everybody's on the same side, but they pretend, they have to pretend to be its real court case. So we interested. Possibly they won't let televisions in to minimize the risk of making a mistake that gives the game away. One thing that happens both in Scotland and, and Catalonia is that some people don't like to hear the word traitors. But there's no other way to call somebody who for years have been lying to you working for the other side is a traitor. Imagine, I don't know. Um, the example we normally put in Barcelona, I don't, my knowledge of s history of Scotland, though I read a bit about it, is basic. But imagine one of your cities was besieged by the English troops, and then the councillors of the defense of the city, uh, Glasgow, Aberdeen, Inverness, uh, Edinburgh, you name it, 
You capture them at night, poisoning the water wells, killing, stabbing the guards in the back to murder them, and opening the doors to the city. That is treason. And you have to call a spade a spade. You cannot defeat an enormous lie as the Catalan process is, the same way as the Scottish process is, with a lie even when it's a white one. It's like in the Truman Show we mentioned so many times. The girl tells Truman that everything in her life is a lie, so in his mind he's been betrayed by them all. There's no way to say that in a nice way. And I'll put an example to clarify things a bit more. Imagine that Scottish and Catalan freedom uh, is an old lady who's been in prison for 300 years. And this, your SMP and our Catalan leaders are the people that actually see them because we only see images of what they give us. We're inside Plato's cavern, Plato's cave, and we only see the images inside the cave. But actually, these people are the puppeteers, are the ones that make the Chinese shadows to us. Well, this woman can be alive or she can have died of natural death or she can have died of an accident or non-appropriate behavior. I don't know. She managed to commit suicide because uh, she had the shoelaces or the belt with her. Or she can have died because of a um, man, man, uh, man slaughter or she can have been murdered. All these things are different. Some people are trying to say that the Catalan process is still alive, but, um, well, uh, there has to be every kind under the sun, but these people are not serious. Then all the others, and I'm not going to bore you with examples, but all the other three categories require certain responsibility on the side of our politician. Well, if it's natural death, not. But at least we would know it's dead, so we have to find some other person. And if it's an accident, it's because somebody didn't put the measures to avoid the accident, like the Scottish referendum rigging. And if it was because party interest or they didn't behave right, it could be manslaughter. But murder is with premeditation. For years in advance, you've been preparing to murder this woman. And this woman is the freedom of Scotland. This woman is the freedom of Catalonia. The equivalent of murdering one person when you murder one nation, that's treason. So um, these people are traitors. And there's no other way to call it different. Because if we were able to leave emotions aside, we should be happy. Because somebody tells you, no, no, we've won. But we've been betrayed by our own side. So the only thing, and technically it's very easy, is we only need to substitute these traitors by Catalan people and declare independence. If we manage to take, it's so difficult because of the ego of people accepting that we've been uh, taken to the biggest ride of our lives in millions. But we have to do it because there's no other way. And the only thing it requires is that lots of people accept the truth. So on one way, it might seem very difficult, but on the other side, it's very compared to other times where we had to fight uh, much bigger armies than ours, or it's, we've had it easier than we've ever had it in 300 years. So um, a couple of things, I'll only mention one, because it's, it's the way how they always, there's appears somebody in Catalan television, is a, is a, former creator of Partido Popular in Catalonia, so a nobody, that claims that he's been in a dinner with Putin and that Israel and Russia support Catalan independence. Well, nobody can believe that. That's not true. That's an enormous lie. And nobody asked for proof. People just come out there and they say they, they this amazing things and nothing happens. And in the newspaper that has been, then the newspaper that, that publishes it, don't even watch the video because it says that in detail, in detail, something without proof in detail says that the Russians have demanded a, ba a military base in Catalan soil. And then you watch the video and the guy says it's Israel. So they don't even watch 
We live in a society where media don't even watch the videos they hang up. You cannot mistake Israel for Russia if you watch the video. So somebody decided to put a video and there's now millions of people uh, complaining about this thing. Another important thing these days is that there's been several cases of child abuse in Montserrat, which is the Catalan Holy Mountain, and it's very central to us. And of course, there's been some people saying, no, this is because it's Montserrat, it's an attack on Catalonia. Well, we, I don't buy that. The same way as we shouldn't dismiss offhandedly the accusations that Alex Salmon might have done something wrong in the case of sexual abuse. We should not blame people before proof is given, but we cannot always put things on the fact that, especially because we know Alex Salmon works against independence, but in case that he worked for independence, we cannot do these things. We need to respect children, we need to protect children, and everybody has to be the same in front of law, Montserrat or no Montserrat. Um, the news that get here in Catalonia about Scotland basically is the member of Scottish Parliament doing strange things in a pub. I think I don't remember exactly the name now, but from Aberdeen South, I think it is. And it's under investigation in the Tory party. And um, some noises about Westminster wanting to get rid of the Scottish Parliament. That's the kind of freedom we have. It's, we have parliaments that can be blocked at will by our colonial masters. It's time we moved on. And the main thing is Nicola Sturgeon, well, apart from traveling as it's supposed to be her due, but it's postponing the day where she's going to announce a second referendum. Well, the ones that listen to us often know that no referendum will take independence to Catalonia or Scotland. But we see it less advanced in Scotland than in Catalonia, the number of people who is for UDI. So until you accept UDI is the only way out, you think you're working for independence, but you're not. Because if the means you use to reach your objective are not efficient, you are not working for your objective. That apart from the trolls, the moles that support SMP because they actually support the union. Huh? So, uh, and I read it was based because it lacks information. This whole Brexit thing, and we've said it several times now, so I don't want to bore you with that. This linking independence to Brexit is a nonsense. A lot of people want independence, and independence wants, means out of the European Union. So linking it to Brexit would be a bad idea. Of course, the question is Nicola Sturgeon, the SMP, Alex Salmon, all the names you know in the SMP work for the other side. Interestingly enough, people, after five years, we've been saying, I've been saying that Nicola Sturgeon is a British mole since and Alex Salmon is a British mole since a week after the referendum in 2014. And now some people are coming to terms with that truth. So, well, good to know. And last thing, we'll, we'll comment this on Venezuela. Venezuela is quite close or quite central in politics here, not because just international things, but it's quite, it's Spanish politics. Um, thousands of Venezuelans live in Catalonia and most of them are against Maduro. And that's why we need to be a bit more... So we speak with people. Every day I speak with three, four people that are from Venezuela, but they have a right to vote here if we have a referendum or if we have elections. There's all these things about all oh, Maduro is Che Guevara or Hugo Chavez and then there's the Americans which are the bad guys. It's a bit too simplistic. People are dying of hunger. Um, the Orinoco is being plundered. Uh, ethnic groups are being deprived of their natural habitat. Cuban army runs the country. 
Uh, elections in where Maduro became president are illegal. All that is true. Sadly, the opposition today, this morning, I was working with a bartender, bar owner, just from Venezuela, said, I don't like the opposition either. So it's uh, different shades of the same, you name it. Thus, we tend to complicate things more, but the problem is that a couple of pro indi parties here have linked themselves with Maduro, which, apart from being simplistic, it's suicidal because these thousands of Venezuelans that are here are against Maduro, so you are putting them against Venezuela. So well done, guys. And um, and that's about it. That's what we wanted to tell you this week. Thanks for being with us. Try to spread this program to make it worth, especially for K Radio, to keep it on. Uh, but even when it's the less listened to version, you form part of something that it's it's making history in Catalonia and that we hope humbly it will help to make history in the independence of Scotland. We are winning. We're going to win this. Saura luba gubra. Visca Catalunya Lliura. This has been another update from the Catalan Independentist Resistance from Radio Hadrian. Remember that you can follow us on social media, either on Facebook, YouTube, our Twitter account, Instagram, Google, Telegram, and also on Evox. El 13 de setembre de 2009, el poble de Catalunya, amb total indiferència dels partits regionalistes, decideix organitzar una consulta popular sobre la independència. L'èxit és esclatant, 70% a favor de la independència. Espanya se sent amenaçada. Les consultes sense partits polítics són l'expressió de la sobirania del poble català, que Madrid no té sota control. Els partits regionalistes catalans es fan independentistes. Creen l'ANC, l'Assemblea Nacional Catalana, per agrupar l'independentisme popular de les consultes. La mentida. 11 de setembre de 2012, el poble de Catalunya es manifesta amb més de 2 milions de persones a Barcelona amb un crit únic i unànime. Independència. Els anys següents es fan 6 manifestacions milionàries més, amb el crit únic i unànime. Independència. La mentida. 9 de novembre de 2014, els catalans són cridats a un referèndum per la independència que acaba sent una simple consulta no vinculant. Malgrat això, el resultat és un esclatant 80,91% per la independència. 27 de setembre de 2015, les eleccions al Parlament de Catalunya es plantegen com a plebiscitàries. Els partits regionalistes, ara independentistes, guanyen les eleccions amb 72 diputats, més de la majoria absoluta, però incompleixen la promesa electoral i no fan cap declaració. 14 de febrer de 2016, mor Muriel Casals, una de les líders independentistes en circumstàncies no aclarides, en ser atropellada per una bicicleta. La Muriel exigia als 72 diputats la declaració unilateral que havien promès. 3 de maig de 2016, l'activista independentista David Raventós es declara en vaga de fam per exigir la declaració unilateral d'independència i és obligat per la força a trencar la vaga de fam. Un jutge espanyol ordena el seu tancament a un psiquiàtric on és torturat químicament durant dos mesos. La mentida. 1 d'octubre de 2017 es convoca un altre referèndum. La policia espanyola assalta els col·legis electorals. Tanmateix, la victòria és aclaparadora, amb un 90,18% pel sí a la independència. Incomprensiblement, el 10 i el 27 d'octubre de 2017, els diputats del Parlament de Catalunya responen fent dues falses declaracions d'independència. I amb la mateixa solemnitat, el govern i jo mateix proposem que el Parlament suspengui els efectes de la declaració d'independència el govern espanyol respon aplicant l'article 155 de la Constitució en lloc del 116, que és el que pertocaria, en cas d'una declaració autèntica, i fan presonar els líders catalans malgrat no hagin fet cap acte delictiu, perquè les declaracions són simbòliques i sense cap tipus d'efecte jurídic. Escòcia va perdre la independència amb un referèndum trampa. Ara els líders catalans, abans regionalistes i ara independentistes, demanen permís a Espanya per fer un referèndum a Catalunya, com el d'Escòcia. La mentida, el documental de la veritat.